Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for December 7th, 2022. Glad that you are with me. Today is National Letter Writing Day, a National Pearl Harbor Day of Remembrance. It's the Feast of Ambrose. Flag Day of India, so that's an interesting picture for that. For its International Civil Aviation Day and Memorial Day in East Timor. Go ahead and get started. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Love and faithfulness will meet, justice and peace will embrace. Faithfulness will spring from the earth, and justice will look down from heaven. The Lord's name be praised. Our reading for today comes from John chapter 3, starting with verse 13. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our reading for today is, again, a familiar one. This is the baptism of Jesus. This uh, account comes from all of the Gospels. This is something that really starts off his ministry. What happens before this, we don't know. Luke has a little bit of information um, about Jesus at around 12 or 13, but that's it. Um, As far as the canonical Gospels are concerned, Gospel of Thomas and some others have some interesting stories about what may have happened with Jesus and his childhood, but um, the Gospel of Matthew, among the others, don't really consider that something that is all that important. This is where things really get going. So again, it's rooted in the, the ministry of John the baptizer who has been calling for repentance among the people, um, and all of Judea and, and Jerusalem are coming out to him Uh, He's warning people, uh, uh, he's pushing away sort of the political as well as the religious elites um, and has some pretty fiery things to say. Well, Jesus comes to him um, from Galilee to be baptized by him and John doesn't want to do it. He says, no, 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 He, he seems to know who he is. In Matthew's gospel, we don't know why he knows who he is. Uh, in Luke's gospel, there's the the implication or the the short story about um, how these are cousins. But in Matthew, that's not a a piece of information that is given. We just know that John does not want to do it. He says, "No, I need to be baptized by you. This the role should not be reversed here, and you're, you're coming to me for baptism." And Jesus' answer is a really interesting one. He says, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. What is that, right? Um, To a certain extent, part of this is maybe that Jesus is, is recognizing that he needs to go through the same path that others have. We have already seen in Matthew's gospel that Jesus, um, as a small child, 
went and fled, fled to Egypt, uh, escaped the, um, the terrible king who tries to kill all of the infants, which sounds a lot like Egypt, um, and yet finds this place of safety there, like Joseph. He then comes out of Egypt, um, just like Israel, like the people, the Hebrews did in the Exodus, comes out and, and comes back to the land and, and settles up in the north. Um, and so he is rehearsing, he is going through sort of uh, the history of these people. And here now he is rehearsing this idea of repentance, this idea of of being re-anointed to, um, uh, to be repent, right? To, to, to turn back to God. Now, this may not be something that he actually needs, but he goes through sort of the, the process just like everyone else. It's sort of the, um, the boss who will not tell the people under them to do something that they would not do themselves, right? So they participate in it. They are a part of it. Even though they don't have to, they do it anyways. This is kind of the idea, maybe, that Jesus is undergoing this sign of repentance, even though it's not as necessary for him, but to fulfill the, the righteousness, the, the right relationship with all of these things, it needs to start in this way, right? Even he needs this fresh start um, and this beginning. It's also very much a um, sort of this image is similar to anointing. He is taking on this anointing, this anointed one status. Uh, he has been marked specifically. And this really comes in in this vision that it's actually unclear who sees it. Um, it just says he. So it could be John that sees this thing. It could be Jesus that sees this thing. Um, it's unclear in the language. Again, in other Gospels, we have John telling people that he sees this, so that seems to make sense. But again, in Matthew's Gospel, it's unclear who sees this. Um, God's very voice. Uh, the, the heavens opens up and God, the Spirit of God descends like a dove and lands on Jesus, and a voice from heaven says, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is a, a rousing endorsement for this person, this man, Jesus, who we have just met in this gospel. Um, we heard of his birth, but this is really sort of the first real interaction. Um, other than, you know, as his birth in the early life, he's fairly passive. He's taking a much more sort of active role here. And we are told here at the very, very, very beginning, this is the son of God. A well-loved son, beloved, and in whom God is well And this is all, again, in the context of John, who is well regarded as this spiritual leader, as this prophetic person, as this person to whom we should really pay attention. And he is saying, I'm not worthy to baptize you. You should be baptizing me. Um, it's a similar sort of idea that we participate in, as in John's gospel, when John tells his own disciples, hey, this is this is the one that's greater than I and the disciples say, well, if I'm following this guy, John, because I think he's important and he has something important to say, if he's saying this is the person to listen to, well, I'm, I'm going to start to follow him. Um, in the same way we are called on this journey, if we hear that this is the son of God, the beloved with whom God is well pleased, well, maybe we should pay attention to him. Um, we should listen to the things that he is going to say. So we are called as disciples in this. Baptism, again, is this important sign in this story, beginning of Jesus's ministry, and it has become a very important sign in the Christian church. So what is your uh, baptism? Do you remember your baptism directly? Or is it something that you have been told about? 
What does your baptismal identity mean to you? I ask you to stop and, and consider these things for a little bit. Now let us join together in prayer. We praise you, God, our creator, for your handiwork in shaping and sustaining your wondrous creation. Especially we thank you for the miracle of life and the wonder of living. Particular blessings coming to us in this day. The resources of the earth. Gifts of creative vision and skillful craft. The treasure stored in every human life. We dare to pray for others, God our Savior, claiming your love in Jesus Christ for the whole world, committing ourselves to care for those around us in his name. Especially we pray for those who work for the benefit of others. Those who cannot work today, those who teach, and those who learn. People who are poor. The church in Europe. Lord God, we also thank you for our baptism, that in them we have been marked as your own, your own children, that we have been made part of this family of God, adopted in, siblings with Christ, that you have washed away all of our sins and you have made us new. And you call us to new life. We also pray for friends of Beverly's, for the family and friends of Jim Asher, my grandpa Jim, who passed away last week, for family and friends of Jane, a mother of Lena's, uh, Lena's mentor, who passed away in October. We pray for Donald, who asks for prayer for his brother Charles, his niece Cindy, and her mom, Barbara. We also lift up prayers for Magdalena, who submitted an online prayer request for emotional trauma and health issues. We also continue to pray for Beverly, who has broken her 
the bone in her ankle and is in a boot, as well as all the many prayers that we have on our hearts and our minds. O Christ, splendor of the glory of God and perfect image of the Eternal One who begot you, we praise you for the infinite love which sent you among us. We confess you as the light and life of the world, and we adore you as our Lord and our God, both now and forever. Amen. Now let us continue to praising the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now the God of peace be with us. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, as well as going to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA, and our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Join us on Facebook and Instagram for more fun, as well as uh, subscribing to this on Substack or um, Spotify as well. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time.